Hi everyone, I'm Jason Hayes, Product Manager for Trimble Realworks, and today I want to tell you a little bit about what's new in version 11. Now this is a great release with a lot of new tools and enhancements to make working with point cloud data easier and more productive. So let's take a look at what's new in Trimble Realworks version 11. Now the first thing you'll probably notice is that the user interface has changed. We've merged the workspace in the list window into one single pane. Now this pane can still be moved and docked where you like. It can be along the top or along the bottom, or even back over here on the side where it is by default. Now these two windows are normally organized with the workspace on top and the list window on the bottom. However, you can also orient them so that the list window is going to be on the right. And you can still select objects and drag them into folders in the workspace window. Now if you want to go back to the default setting, just simply click this icon again, and then go back to being organized top and bottom. We've also added a new icon to make it clear how to go up in a parent directory. For example, if I go into this folder, just click the black arrow. We've also added a new icon for creating a new group or folder. And also, the new group or folder is also ready for you to just type in the name. Now in an effort to give you the maximum viewable area on the screen, we've added these pins at the top of each pane to allow you to turn on auto hide. You can see here that it's giving you a lot more area to view, and then to bring the pane back again, just mouse over the tab. Now if you don't want the auto hide feature turned on, just click on that thumbtack icon again, and it's going to keep your pane locked open. Let's say we want to use the feature set tool to create some feature codes over here on this curb and gutter. What we've done now is we've made it so that when you open a tool like the feature set tool, it's going to open over here in its own pane on the right hand side. Now just like the workspace and list window pane, we've also added the auto hide feature to the tools pane. Now another thing that we've done is whenever you have a floating toolbar like this picking parameters, we've highlighted the title bar in this yellow color. It makes it a lot easier to see as it contrasts nicely against the gray background of the ribbon. One of my favorite things in the new release are some new enhancements to the visualization. Now here, you can see the point cloud looks pretty good, but there's no shading. What we've added is something called enhanced ambient shading, and you can see it gives it a lot more depth and kind of a realistic view. Now for areas where you may not have as many points, we've also, under the view tab, added something called adaptive pixel size, which kind of fills in these areas like you see here. Another thing that's nice about the enhanced ambient shading is it also works on points that may not have any RGB or intensity values. So you can see turning it on here gives it a lot more depth and a better understanding of the scene. One of the most common enhancement requests we've received is to batch process long procedures such as importing, processing, and the registration of scans. We put them all in one place now in a tool called Import and Register. Once the dialog opens, you'll see all of the scans and groups or folders within the project. Now you can add additional scans or folders. So if I want to add a new folder or group, I click on New Group. I'll type in a name. Maybe these are interior scans of a building, so I'll type in Interior. Click OK. Then I can bring in individual files or browse to a folder that has scans inside of it which is what I would do if I was bringing in data from a TX5 or a Faro scan. Then I just need to click on the folder where all of the scans are located, right there, and then click OK. Now you'll see each of the scans have come in in that interior group that I created. Now if I want to remove any of these scans, I can just click on this red X to remove those. I can also remove a folder or a group the same way. Then I just need to click Next. And then because these are FLS files, I have a few more options. Just check that those are okay, and then click Next again. Next, I need to determine how I want to sample the points into the project. This is required to see them in the 3D view. I could bring in all of the points by sampling by step of one, or maybe I bring in every second or third point. Or I may want to use spatial sampling to have a specific spacing between each of the points. Or I may just want to generate a preview of just a couple million points per scan. Now some people may want to filter their points by range, only allowing points up to a certain distance to come in. This will help them make sure that they bring in only the most accurate points. Once you've finished with all of these settings, go ahead and click Next. Here we determine if we want to apply registration to the project, and if so, 
Do we want to do it without any targets, or do we want to extract targets and register? If we decide to register with targets, then we need to determine what kind of targets. To remove a target, click the red X. To add the target, just select the option at the bottom of the screen. Now if you don't see the spherical target size that you want, just simply type in the diameter. I'm just going to type in millimeters, it's going to convert it to feet, and then click spherical target. That's going to add it to the list. Once you finish with each of the options, click start to begin the processing. Now on the modeling side, we've made some improvements as well. One of the new things we've added is a new intersect tool. And where I like to use it are on objects like this ductwork, where you can see that it's sagging and it's not all the same size uh, diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and click on intersect, choose the new intersect tool. Then I'm just going to come down here and click on each of these segments that I've extracted earlier. And what it's going to do is it's going to connect each of those to each other. Where if we have a change in size, it's going to add in a reducer. So I'm just going to finish clicking on each of these. And it makes a quick to go through and do something like this complex duct work. Now once I've finished modeling all my duct work, maybe I want to look at one specific component without having the cluttered view of seeing everything else. All I need to do is select the component, right click, and from the contextual menu, choose the option, view only this. Then, as you can see, it's hidden everything except for the selected object or objects. Another nice feature that we've added is the ability to snap to faces when using the geometry modifier tool. So for example, I'm going to select the cylinder and then I'm just going to extrude it out and it's going to snap right onto this plane. And speaking of planes, sometimes when you're working with them, you can get the view oriented where they virtually disappear. So what we've done is we've gone up here and on the view tab, we've added a new option to view geometry with an outline. You can see here, makes it much easier to see. All right, now I know I'm going a bit long, so I've just got one more thing that I want to show you. And that's the new ability to move mesh objects. So under the surfaces tab, Choose Move Mesh, and then you can grab this manipulator and move your mesh pretty much anywhere you want. Now having the ability to move a mesh wherever you want doesn't only look cool, it gives you a lot more opportunities to do detailed inspections. For example here, I'm using the measurement tool to create a measurement along a vertical axis to give me a clearance under this bridge. So as you can see, there's a lot of great stuff in this release. Make sure to visit the website and download the release notes to see the complete list of new tools and improvements that can help you be more productive when working with point clouds. Thanks for watching.